This episode of Defining Diabetes is sponsored by Dexcom, Omnipod, the Contour Next One Blood Glucose Meter, Touched by Type 1, and the T1D Exchange. I almost made this one larger episode with three topics in it, and then I decided if I didn't break them apart, future listeners wouldn't be able to find them. So this is a Defining Diabetes episode about the Smoky effect. But there are two others that go with it. The other one's called Defining Diabetes Feet on the Floor, and the third one Defining Diabetes Dawn Phenomenon. Anyway, the three of them are oddly similar, but completely different, and every one of these ideas needs to be understood. I'm not going to be explaining them by myself. I'm going to have Jenny Smith with me. I'll tell you a little bit more about Jenny in a second. But first, please remember that nothing you hear on the Juice Box podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise. Please always consult a physician before making any changes to your health care plan or becoming bold with insulin. If the mood should strike you and you'd like to find out more about the Dexcom G6 continuous glucose monitor, please go to Dexcom.com forward slash juice box. If you're looking for a free, no obligation demo of the Omnipod tubeless insulin pump, myomnipod.com forward slash juice box. Want to add your voice to some terrific type 1 diabetes research without ever leaving your home? Can do it right there from your phone in just a couple of minutes. T1D Exchange dot org forward slash juice box to check out the blood glucose meter that Arden uses the contour next one you go to contournext.com forward slash juice box and of course touched by type one dot org to see type one diabetes advocacy done correctly my friend Jenny Smith has had type one diabetes for over 30 years Jennifer holds a bachelor's degree in human nutrition and biology from the University of Wisconsin she is a registered and licensed dietitian, a certified diabetes educator, and a certified trainer on most makes and models of insulin pumps and continuous glucose monitoring systems. She is also a frequent contributor to the Juice Box podcast. And I find Jenny's input about type 1 diabetes and the management of insulin and things around type 1 to be completely invaluable. She is my favorite person. I want to do three defining diabetes ideas. Okay. And then see if we can do a mini pro tip about glycemic load and index. Sure. Does that make sense? I That's pick a good one. I pick all the sexy diabetes topics. <laughs> Absolutely. You, you know what I, I realized um that for the last number of years now, as the new year rolls over, I have this horrible pit in my stomach and I think I'm never gonna come up with stuff for Jenny to do. And I'm gonna run out of it. And now it's September already, and I'm like, we don't have enough time to record all the stuff that I'd like to record. Right. <laughs> and right. I just, I, I, I think back to the person who told me, like, no, oh, you're starting a diabetes podcast. That won't last long. You'll run out of things to say. And I think more now that that person just didn't realize all the things there were to say. Y you know, right? Well, and I think so many things change, and with being, with having, um, your like online kind of groups and whatnot. I think there are a lot of topics and things that end up coming up that you're like, huh, that's oh, a good one to talk about. For, for certain, right? for certain of, of all the trepidation I had about starting a private Facebook group, watching all of those people speak to each other, like sometimes like really lights me up. I'm like, Ooh, that's such a good thought right there. Or, or somebody has a half a thought and they can't get to the rest of it, and you can see the rest right. of it, and you're like, oh, I wouldn't have thought of the first part, but I understand how to finish this idea. Um, right. So anyway, it, it has been, it's been incredibly valuable. At this point, I don't see why this podcast would have to end. And in, right. the, in the beginning, I thought like, oh, it could probably only go for a certain amount of time, but I think that might have just been bad advice from somebody. All right, so three Defining Diabetes episodes today that I think of I'm going to put them up separately, but I think they could probably all go together. I want to do 
Dawn Phenomenon, Feet on Floor, and the one I can't pronounce, Smoggy Effect? Smoggy. Smoggy? Is that what it is? Yes. yes. All right. Let's start with the one I don't know anything about so you can get warmed up. What is the Smoggy Effect? <laughs> Do you want to actually spell it for people? Sure. <laughs> I have it here as S-O-M-O-G-Y-I, and then Effect in the Classic Way. With an E for all of you who always use an A when you mean A. <laughs> Correct. Yes. <laughs> well, the interesting thing um, is that this topic is kind of one that's sort of like, it's like this 50-50. I don't know that that's the exact like percentile breakdown of people who believe versus don't really believe that it's kind of the issue. But um it's essentially relative to why you might have elevated blood sugars in the morning. Okay. What ends up happening after you have a low blood sugar is it's a rebound high blood sugar that you end up with in response to having had the lower blood sugar value. Some from what we call kind of counter regulatory hormones mm -hmm. that are released in terms of a low blood sugar. Yeah. Why sometimes it happens versus not all the time, mm -hmm. I think is probably the reason that people question whether it's a real thing. I guess that's the easiest way to because say Because it. it doesn't consistently happen every time. Correct. Okay. Exactly. Um, I mean, there is in relevance, it seems to be low blood sugars that are usually less than about 55 mm -hmm. and that are more sustained in length yeah. that seem to have this counter regulatory hormone output and can then result in the higher blood sugar later. Now, some of it also is when we have a low blood sugar, especially with today's technology, you get a, an alert right from your CGM. Um, and so then you may treat that low blood sugar. And because those counter regulatory hormones are not like hey, right now, she or he needs this right now. Yeah. They could have lingering impacts. You end up treating this low blood sugar with what would normally work for you, right? Mm -hmm. 10 grams, it always works. It brings you up. You never go too high from it. But now with the counter-regulatory hormones in the picture, along with your normal 10 gram treatment, you end up at like 290 when you wake up in the morning and you're like, what, what the happened? heck? Yeah. So. Okay, so I have, I feel like I have some experience with this not knowing that it was a thing or had a name or at least a name that is hard to pronounce and oddly spelled. Uh, but it is, but you know that it's actually named after a person. I think it's a, it is. It's named after it's the last name of, I think it's the professor or the doctor who um, saw it happen and thus named after him. All right. If well, I remember correctly, I'll try to figure out who he is while I'm telling you that before Arden had a CGM, I've said this, a ton of times on the podcast, right? I would get her blood sugar up to like 190, put her to mm -hmm. bed. She'd wake up at 100, and I was like, look how good I am at this, right? And then one day we put a, a Dexcom on her, and I realized I was pushing her up to 190. In the early part of overnight, she was dropping to like 55, sitting there for an hour or two, and then she'd rise okay. back up and level off at 90. And you never treated the low because you didn't really, without a CGM, you didn't really know that it was happening. Never knew it. I took all that anecdotal data about her waking up at 90 and starting at 190, and I never considered she could have gone below 90 and come back up again. I always just thought she was drifting 100 yeah. points down overnight. Yeah. Right. And thus, she had to be higher to go to bed at night because otherwise, if she went to bed at 100, she'd be in the toilet by the time she woke up, even though it was happening sooner. Yeah. And then just naturally rising back up from the counter regulatory release. And I want to keep everyone focused on the idea that the reason Arden drifted down overnight was because I did not have any meaningful idea about how to use insulin. Like, so I was, <laughs> she, she was just right. like, you know, because I've been helping this person recently who hears me, but can't accept it. Do you know what I mean? They just think, oh, no, the low happens at night. And I'm like, no, you are messing up your meal bolus. Then you're overcorrecting afterwards. And then she is experiencing a low blood sugar later. And no matter how many times I say, 
you know, what's happening now is not about now. It's about before, you know, it, it, it's, it's like there's a f- I, for this person specifically. And I would imagine for a lot of people, it's this fear that's been built into them day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year of, of thinking like this is just random and there's no reason for anything that's happening here because they can't see the causation, right? They, right. they just, they see the pencil go in the pocket and they think, Oh, it's the pencil. It's not the pencil. Right. You're, you're looking here. What's going on over here is what's happening. Right. Um, and when you talk about a hormonal release, is that from the liver? Mm-hmm. Okay. And it's just glucagon, right? Or no, it is. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you can't count on it. You can't count on, you can't count on it always happening from my base understanding of it. Yes. Right. And secondly, you can't count on how much is dumped. Plus, I would assume you can't count on it overpowering a certain amount of insulin, active insulin. Like maybe it could catch a drift where the insulin's almost gone. But if you were to put in a large bolus, it would take you right past that. It would power right through any glucagon dump and just tank you. Right. All right. Okay. Apparently, it's Stephen Smoji. And he's a Jersey guy. What's up, Stephen? Oh. Because somebody's going to tell you that they heard this on here and come back and let you know about it. This is the guy. It's, I don't know. He's an internist, apparently. All right. Well, no, no, wait. Now there's another Smoji. Nope. There's a guy in Texas. I think it's actually. He's an orthopedic. And what there's I a found woman here. is. Well, how many Smojis could there be in the world? Yeah. What I <laughs> found is it says it's a theater- theoretical phenomenon was named after Michael Smoji, a Hungarian-born professor of biochemistry at Washington University and Jewish Hospital of St. Louis. I have it here. Who prepared the first insulin treatment given to a child with diabetes in the U.S. in October of 1922. Smoji showed that excessive insulin makes diabetes unstable and first published his findings in 1938. That's what I found. And he will not take offense to what I just said because he died the year I was born. So he has... uh, (laughs) It's like, I don't care anymore, right? He's been gone quite a long time. Although, you got to give this guy props. Born in 1883, he lived till 1971. Wow. That's amazing. It's almost 100. Want to math? Let's math. Yeah, that's almost 100. It's almost 100. Well, you said, what, 1883? 83. So 17 years. 17 plus 71. Hold on. Seven, carry the one. It's eight. He was like 88? Yeah, he was. Wow. Did you go to public school too? (laughs) <laughs> no, I did not. Oh, I no? went to cat- Catholic school from first grade through 12th grade. We've just let down the Catholic and public school systems in one <laughs> felt swoop. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, really yeah. did. All right. So is there anything else to say about the smoji effect? It causes... No. It causes... High blood sugar, high blood sugar waking in the morning. Due to low blood sugars overnight. overnight because of a glucagon dump that happens from a low if, in fact, any of this is happening. Well, all right then. That's a rock solid. Uh, <laughs> that's a rock solid description. Here you go. It's a rock Here you solid go. description of something that may or may not exist. Well, and I think the interesting thing about it too, in terms of like pushing it a little further, is that it's really something that's considered or named after just that morning high blood sugar and the potential reason for that morning high blood sugar beyond another thing that we're going to define, which we'll talk about high blood sugars in the morning too. Yeah, but. During the daytime, it's not like you don't have this counter-regulatory potential impact either. So you could, again, have a low blood sugar during the day, Mm -hmm. and you could also have counter-regulatory hormone impact in the aftermath. Again, treating it as you normally treat it, let's say 10 grams of carb is your staple treatment. It always works. And now all of a sudden today, for some reason, you're at you know a high 200 and you're thinking, well, why? Right. You know. So again, it could be the relative nature of the number or the low that you were at, mm-hmm. and possibly how long the low was sustained, um, in terms of those counter-regulatory hormones. If you'd like to hire Jenny to help you with your type one diabetes, check her out at integrateddiabetes.com. Thanks so much to the Omnipod Tubeless Insulin Pump. 
If you'd like to get a free no obligation demo of the Omnipod, do it now at myomnipod.com forward slash juice box. Learn more about the Dexcom G6 Continuous Glucose Monitor. See those trends. See your direction. See your speed. Dexcom.com forward slash juice box. Get the best blood glucose meter on the market, in my opinion, at contournext.com forward slash juice box. You want to see people doing good things for other people with type 1 diabetes? You need to go to touchedbytype1.org. And of course, to get involved simply in some type 1 research that helps everyone with type 1 diabetes. And to do that right there from your cell phone or from your sofa without ever leaving your house in just a few minutes, t1dexchange.org forward slash juice box. You go to those links, you are doing something good for yourself, good for somebody else, and supporting the podcast. All of those links are available right here in the show notes of your podcast player. And they're also at juiceboxpodcast.com. Click the links, support the show. You all should know, by the way, when I say click the links, support the show, the pantameter of that reminds me of Save the Cheerleader, Save the World from Heroes. Do you remember that TV show on NBC? Anyway, there's a little look into my head. There are countless other episodes of Defining Diabetes available for you right now. And that's probably a lie because they are countable. There's not so many of them that I can't count them, but I'm not going to count them. A couple of ways to get to them. Go into your podcast app, search Defining Diabetes, they'll all pop up. Uh, Go into the stream in your podcast app, all episodes, scroll down, you'll see them. You can go to juiceboxpodcast.com and scroll down a little bit, right? And you'll see all kinds of stuff. Let me tell you some of the stuff you'll see on the main page. All the After Dark episodes. Right now we have After Dark Divorced and Co-Parenting. After Dark Sex with Type 1 from a male perspective. Sex with Type 1 from a female perspective. Depression and self-harm. Trauma and addiction. Weed smoking. Drinking with Type 1 diabetes. There's also all kinds of episodes that are focused on algorithm pumping. And then, you know what? You could actually click, oh, excuse me, look up, oh, hold on, excuse me. Also, I have all the pro tip episodes right there on the front page and recent episodes. Now, if you go to, uh, then you click on a link up top, right? It says Juice Box Podcast. You click on that. Now, all of a sudden, you're looking at the defining diabetes episodes. There's fat and protein rise, compression low, and interstitial fluid, rage bolus, bump and nudge. Feeding insulin, these little diabetes terms that maybe you're just like, I don't know what they mean when they say insulin resistance, but I have an episode where Jenny and I explain that to you. Ketones, stop the arrows, brittle diabetes, low before high, pre-bolus, trust what you know will happen, will happen. Glycemic index and glycemic load as a defining diabetes, but you know what we have coming up? A pro tip about it. There's non-compliance and algorithm and on and on and on and on. If there's a diabetes term that's been said out loud, Jenny and I have defined it on defining diabetes. Two new ones that are out right now around this, like I mentioned in the beginning, I think go together with this one. The other two are feet on the floor and the smoji effect, the samogi effect. I don't know how to say that word, but you'll say it. It'll be the only word that sounds like samoji when you read it. Looking for a great doctor? or other type of diabetes practitioner, check out, ju- check out, woo, there goes my voice. Check out juiceboxdocs.com, an ever-growing list of podcast listeners' favorite practitioners. Absolutely free. Go in there, find one, or send me one to add. Diabetes Pro Tip episodes can actually be found in all the places I just described in your podcast app and at diabetesprotip.com. If you're enjoying the podcast, please consider sharing it with someone else.